Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to talk about a trend in prepping videos that I'm seeing here on YouTube. And those are videos that are titled something along the lines of uh, my prepper haul from you know X, Y, or Z store, and the thumbnail will be like you know, a million piles of toilet paper and you know all of, you know, all this different food, all this crap that they just got at the the store, you know, for their prepper's haul. I want to talk about that in this video because the entire idea of a prepper's haul is kind of antithetical to what it means to be a prepper. Well, one of my favorite uh, channels here on YouTube, at least in terms of like prepping related stuff, is Canadian Prepper. And he has a phrase that he uses quite frequently where he'll say, uh, you know, prepping isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. Well, I would take that even one step further and say that it's like, it's like hiking a long trail. It's like doing the Appalachian Trail or, you know, even if you want to take it to another level, and I don't think it would be inappropriate to do so, you know, prepping is like nomadic life where you're constantly moving uh, and there is no final destination where you get to where you're kind of like, oh, I did my prepper's haul, I'm done prepping. Well, what do I mean by that? To answer that question, I'll ask a different question. And that is, well, I've been into prepping and preparedness for a while. I go to the grocery store at the moment on a weekly basis. When I bring my boy out to his school activities, classes, you know, to see his friends and things like that, I'll usually do one grocery sh uh, store, uh, you know, drop in per week. Uh, I would ask you, like, how much food do you think I would personally get each week when I go out, do I get just one week's worth? Do I get two weeks worth? A whole month's worth? Three months worth? As a prepper, am I getting those like prepper hauls every time I go out? Well, no, the answer is, is that if I am going out on a weekly basis, the amount of food that I'm buying when I go to the grocery store is what I'm going to be eating for that week. Now, I know that a lot of the ways that people think about prepping and preparedness, that sounds like kind of, kind of, counterintuitive, perhaps, because preppers are supposed to be those people that go out to the store and drain it of everything. I mean, Prepping has, I like to use the word mystique, but I think bad reputation is probably the better uh, uh, phrase to use. Uh, prepping has this bad reputation uh, that preppers are the ones that cause all the shortages in the store, but nothing could be further from the truth because people who are really into prepping and preparedness, they already bought their stuff when it was you know, on sale and it was perfectly available and there was no hassle. The people that are out in the stores that are, you know, uh, doing that kind of hoarding, stockpiling at the very last minute while the emergency is already on top of them, uh, those are the people that were anti-prepping and, you know, they're trying to make up for it later on. So when I go to the grocery store on a weekly basis, I'm getting one week of food. For example, here's a can of baked beans. Now, hypothetically, if I were to eat one can of baked beans per week, I don't, but if I were to eat one can of baked beans per week and I go out to the grocery store, what I would do is I would buy one can of baked beans to uh, replace the one can that I ate out of my pantry that was purchased a year ago. Uh, and that way I'm constantly rotating through, getting new food in there, and my grocery bill on a weekly basis is no different than what uh, anyone else's grocery, uh, grocery bill is. So a lot of people will talk about, well, prepping uh, preparedness, you know, it costs a lot of money to buy that amount of food, but once you get kind of that food in the bank, uh, food in your pantry, and you have that buffer, your grocery bill is exactly the same as everyone else's, with one exception, and that is that as someone that's into prepping or pre preparedness, if you have that kind of stockpile, you have the opportunity to you know, buy extra stuff when it's on sale. Like let's say I go to the grocery store and these, uh, these baked beans, instead of being, I, I forget what I paid for this, but let's say they're half price. And uh, you know, what would I do under that circumstance? Well, given that baked beans can last longer than a year, what I would do is I'd, instead of buying one can, maybe I'd get 20 cans, buy 20 cans for the price of 10 cans. So I'd uh, be saving an awful lot of money. I get a little bit more padding in, in my pantry. And uh, at that point, I would have like a year plus you know, 20 extra weeks uh, padding in there. And then for the next 20 weeks, I could skip buying the baked beans. Uh, you know, when the price goes back up to normal price, I could skip buying the baked beans, and it's as though I'm extending that sale. That for the next 20 weeks, I'm constantly eating on sale baked beans, even though if I went to the grocery store that week, I wouldn't be able to get them. Uh, you know, on sale that week, and that's really the the real uh, leveraging power that you get when you create a pantry is that you get dissociated from uh, you know. The, the price spikes and the, uh, the price fluctuations. If something goes up in price temporarily, and the, the keyword here is temporarily, uh, you know, you can just not buy that item during that period and wait for the price to come back down so you can save an awful lot of money. And when things become scarce, you're not part of the problem because you're not competing for that stuff because you got it and you don't have to pay top dollar for it or fight with people for it and take it away from people that maybe need it more than you. Yeah, if you haven't been prepping and you haven't been preparing, you have to kind of uh, 
jump started a little bit and you do have to get a little bit more stuff but that's not what prepping and preparing is all about that's the introduction to it once you get into prepping and preparedness and you've already set yourself up you never have to do that again that's just your your entry ticket into it and once you've purchased that entry ticket every week it's just a regular grocery bill and occasionally you get a sale and you can take advantage of that so in the long term prepping and preparedness in terms of food is going to save you an awful lot of money because you can be shopping those sales you can be avoiding the price spikes and in that same way you're helping the entire supply chain because when there's too much of something you're helping to absorb that when there's not enough you're kind of standing back and it not only helps you but it helps everyone around you so when you're seeing those videos uh, here on youtube about like you know this is my huge prepper haul that i just got Think, think about maybe retitling some of those videos. That, that they should be titled something more along the lines of, I've just started prepping and this is my you know, beginning entrance into having a pantry. And if you think about it in that way, you gotta take with a grain of salt a lot of what the uh, people in these videos are saying about uh, you know, other prepping topics. Because if they're so new to prepping that they're just starting to build their pantry right now, you have to wonder about their experience level about a number of other things. That doesn't mean that they don't know what they're talking about on a lot of other topics. Uh, you know, you got to compartmentalize people's knowledge about things. You know, if I'm going to go and uh, you know go to my dentist, I'm I'm sure that they're very reliable when it comes to dental information. I'm not going to get information about you know skin cancer or heart surgery from a dentist. You know, different people have different levels of expertise in different things. So you know, just because somebody is new to pantry prepping doesn't mean they don't know anything else about anything else. But, you know, it's good to keep in the back of your mind that just because someone has a channel here on YouTube <laughs> and they like to talk and they like to share ideas uh, and they like to run ads <laughs> on their channel or whatever, you know, I'm not perfect either. But you always have to take with a grain of salt anything that you're hearing people talk about uh, on, you know, a YouTube channel and try to gauge people's different levels of experience because there are a lot of new preppers here and, uh, you know, it's a great tradition here in America that people don't feel like they have to know about what they're talking about in order to have an opinion on it. That's it. I hope you find that helpful. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.